What's up photographers? Welcome back to the studio. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to get into the computer a little bit and talk about sort of the um, sort of organizational stuff we'll have to do this semester with what to do with all your files, get oriented in uh, the Adobe Photoshop software. Um, this is a good one for those of you guys who have like never opened the software before. Um, and then uh, even if you have opened the software before and you feel kind of confident, um, where to go uh, when you run into trouble uh, so that, you know, your workflow isn't constantly interrupted by um, sort of not knowing, right? So uh, let's go into the computer. And um, one of the first things I suppose we should talk about before we even go to the computer is what to do with your files. Um, your camera is going to produce a whole bunch of images. I'm going to tell you to go out and shoot 10, 15, 20 images for each assignment. And um, that's going to clog up your computer in a hurry. So if you don't have a lot of space left on the, um, on the drive that's built into your computer, um, welcome to, you know, the universe of being an art student. Um, I, I, I'm always worried about uh, space on this thing, and so I carry around an external hard drive. Um, this is a bit of an old one. It's actually like a spinning drive in there, and I only get two gig or two terabytes for this huge drive. Um, something this size, right? This is a keychain, a keychain thumbnail. There's 64 gigs of space on this guy. That's going to be plenty, um, and they're stinking cheap, too. Um, SSD drives are probably better uh, for students because of um, sort of the, the constant jostling and dumping it into a backpack and being transported. Um, the solid state or SSD drives just happen to be about two or three times as expensive. Um, if you're running out of storage space on your computer and um, you, uh, you're you wondering where to go to buy one, we can kind of talk about that. But if you're curious, uh, you could always click on the little apple in the upper left hand corner of your Mac and click storage and you'll find out in a hurry how much you have available and what you have left and how much you've been using. Uh, managing that storage is not a bad way uh, to sort of figure out what's chewing up all the space on your computer and what's not. Uh, this tutorial is, really isn't about improving the performance of your computers, um, but uh, there's work we could do there definitely. PC guys, I know there's an equivalent for you as well. But what about when you actually get your images onto the computer here, are two quick images, right? That uh, Let's just say I'm making these my first two assignments. Uh, the very first thing we should do is put a folder on your desktop and uh, name it photography. Uh, you're in a photography class. Let's, uh, let's stay organized by using folders on your computer. Don't bury them in programs that, you know, are used to sort of manage photographs and stuff. Um, I got to tell you that while they are sort of helpful to a certain kind of user, I'm going to try to train you guys to be a little bit more sophisticated in your use. And honestly, like for this class, since it's a place where I need you to have quick, easy access to your images whenever, wherever you are working, uh, a folder is a pretty basic way to do that. Inside of that folder, then uh, you will put probably another folder for each project we're working on. Right now we have two projects going on wherever you're at in your work. Um, always try to organize your folders by assignment. The same goes for your online Google portfolios. They should be organized by unit and assignment. Um, but once you've actually kind of got your images stored in that folder, uh, let's launch Photoshop and sort of take a look at this software. This program is a monster, I gotta say. Uh, it is used by a lot of different kinds of artists, a lot of different kinds of designers, and there's a lot going on here. It's an old program, it's older than some of you guys, and so um, we will probably use a fairly small corner of it. I've been teaching Photoshop for about 15 years or so, and I still don't know all of it. Um, it and there's really no reason for me to. I mean, I, it's used as a photo editing software, video editing software, uh, animation. You can do, uh, um, you know, graphics and logos work. I mean, 3D design, like there's tons of stuff in here, and they keep adding to it, right? Which is why you end up paying what you pay for it. Um, so let's actually approach it specifically through the lens of photo editing. And if you have questions that sort of grow outside of that, uh, we'll talk about where you can go to get those uh, questions answered. Some of them, you know, I'll be able to at least point you in the right direction, if not answer it outright. Uh, but there's a really great community of, of users out there um, that even if Adobe doesn't have a tutorial for it, somebody out there has got it ready to go. If you are opening brand new into Photoshop, uh, yours will look more or less like this. You obviously haven't been working on these photographs, and so it doesn't quite look like mine. Um, but we got to talk just quickly about file types. The two pictures that I have on my desktop here are .jpg files. JPEGs are um, probably what your camera is making uh, right out of the camera, right out of the box. Uh, but you also may be seeing a .cr2 or .nef file. Those are raw images. 
Um, eventually, I'm going to try to have you guys shoot in RAW almost exclusively, at least for this class, because of the, um, the uptick in quality. Or another way of saying that is, if you save out as JPEGs, you take a really high quality camera image and compress it down, and it, uh, it throws away pixel information. So uh, let's work with the highest possible quality your Im images can make. But because um, JPEGs usually will just open directly into Photoshop, that's great. Um, but we're going to try to use um, use a sort of plugin in Photoshop that allows us um, to sort of edit raw images called Adobe Camera Raw. And we can actually trick Photoshop into thinking that our JPEGs are raw images. To do that, go to File, Open. And underneath File, Open, somewhere down at the bottom, you have some options. Uh, turn those options on. And uh, you want to make sure you enable all readable documents. Go cruising through wherever you are here. Mine are on the desktop. I know the file name, uh, but you also have a little thumbnail over here to help you out. But then change the format. Uh, tell Photoshop, don't open this as a JPEG, but open it as a camera raw image. Camera Raw is a plugin. It's sort of a program that runs parallel to Photoshop. And what you'll notice here is that it has some of these uh, more basic looking slider type edits. Um, maybe the kind of thing you might be accustomed to using on social media platforms or even other, uh, other programs like Lightroom, which tend to be a little bit more updated and intuitive. Photoshop is, um, is kind of the granddaddy of Lightroom and is going to teach you sort of the roots of where the Lightroom edits are coming from. Uh, but take a look at, you know, some of these basic ones. Uh, exposure, right? I mean, we'll be talking about exposure all semester, uh, but also a couple of other sliders in here that just feel maybe a bit easier. Now, there's a lot going on in Camera Raw uh, that we'll get into, uh, but for today, mostly just kind of a quick introduction to how we might be opening JPEGs or eventually opening uh, NEF files into Camera Raw. Uh, when I click Open now, I'm going to uh, be taking a look at what's going on in Photoshop proper. Uh, take a quick kind of pause here and look at just sort of some basic arrangement here. I've got toolbars on the left. I've got an options bar or what's sometimes called the control bar on top. Above the control bar, I have this gray sort of file drop down menus and I'll be referencing things like that occasionally. And then over here on the right, you've got some kind of cluster of palettes. Super important to kind of get a handle of what's going on in each of those. Let's take a look at the toolbar first because I think it's the most basic. Uh, if somehow you don't have your tools on the left hand side, go to the window, uh, window drop down menu up on top and turn on tools. Way down here at the bottom you see that I have a lot of customization I can do in the workspace and what I'm looking at. One way to kind of quickly snap yourself into say a particular workspace in Photoshop would be to go to workspace and right now I'm looking at the default essentials uh, but each one of these kind of snaps a different set of tools and different arrangement in place. Uh, you could potentially switch to photography and that would be a good baseline place to begin. Uh, toolbar is broken up into sections. Uh, a couple of sections that I'll just point out really quickly would be up here on the top are your selection tools. Uh, the move tool, keyboard shortcut V, uh, works really well for kind of pulling and dragging things around. And then some of these other selection tools will be really handy for grabbing specific pieces of a photograph, like for example, the quick selection tool. If I wanted to select, uh, say, a particular skin tone or a particular shape. Uh, very handy tools. Now there's also a set of tools that we'll also use, like for example the brush tool. Uh, brush tool feels more like um, a traditional art tool. It behaves like a brush or like a can of spray paint or like a pencil, uh, but it's going to be able to give us some control, even in the photography world, um, over how we apply edits to our photographs. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here in the toolbar, but let's jump up to the control bar or the options bar on top of your image. If you don't see it, jump all the way down here and make sure Options is turned on in the window drop-down menu. Uh, and now I want you to pay attention to how it changes depending on how uh, which tool you have selected. Keyboard shortcut V, grab the selection tool, and I've got my options that change. Keyboard shortcut B, brush, and all of a sudden my options change again. Finally, C, crop, and my options are changing uh, and again, so you can see how each tool has a lot of customization. Now let's go back to the B brush tool, and I want to show you one more way that the brush tool can be further customized. And it has to do with some of the palettes that are over here on the right. Underneath the window option, take a look at all these things. I'm going to find the B brushes palette. 
and brush settings and brushes uh, sort of gives me a huge uh, library of customization that we can do with brushes. Um, uh, Photoshop can actually work as a pretty robust digital painting tool, uh, which is really not a, you know, f photography thing, but just I want to kind of uh, get you guys kind of roughly accustomed to the idea that there's a lot going on in this program, and it's worth learning the basics so that all of these other things really open up to you. Now, there are a couple of palettes that I would say are important uh, to sort of keep in front of you. Um, I closed out a lot of the palettes that I don't need, and the way I did that was I grabbed them out, floated them into space, and then clicked the little X to make them disappear. Some of the palettes that you will see me have open pretty much in every tutorial uh, for the whole semester would be my History palette, and I'm going to drag that right down next to my Layers palette. Uh, adjustments is a palette that we'll probably be using quite a bit this semester, and for this point, let's keep Navigator open. Now I'm going to go through a couple of really basic adjustments here, and then I'm going to talk about where to go for help. A couple of very popular keyboard shortcuts would be Command Plus and Command Minus. If I need to get a really close look at an image and do some work way up close, say for example, removing uh, blemishes or imperfections in a negative or something, I want to be working really, really close. And on the, say for example, a trackpad of my laptop, I can put two fingers on the trackpad and scroll around. If your trackpad uh, isn't really responsive or you, you, know, you, you don't have that option, um, the scroller ball on a mouse, or uh, what I also like to do sometimes is hold spacebar and kind of pull myself around the image. Uh, that way I have a lot more control. You notice how though in, um, in the navigator palette, I also have this tiny little red box, which allows me to sort of pull around an image if I'm really pulled in tightly. Command minus pulls me back out. Say, for example, I make a big oops in a photograph, like I didn't realize I had my brush uh, set to black and I was trying to do some work. One of my absolute favorite keyboard shortcuts, frankly, my left hand pretty much sits on it the whole time I'm on the computer, is Command-Z. Uh, Command-Z is the keyboard shortcut for Edit, Undo. There is a keyboard shortcut for Redo, Last Brush Stroke, uh, Shift-Command-Z. Um, but it's just such a common one, especially learning Photoshop for the first time. So I always kind of keep my hand over there on a couple of popular keyboard shortcuts, and uh, I'm ready to make those mistake changes if it happens. So a couple things I'll point out real quick before I wrap this tutorial up. So um, it's a big, hairy program, and we're all going to get confused by it. In fact, it seems to me that technology uh, doesn't necessarily make our lives easier. It makes it more confusing. Um, but there's a lot to learn here, so how do I learn more? Well, you can always come to me with questions. This is maybe the first thing. Being a part of a community of students who are learning this is awesome. Uh, learning from a teacher who has taught before is really great. But I may not be around. You may be working in the middle of the night. I'm not going to answer your emails or your text messages or whatever. So where can you go to get help? There's a couple of fun things built in here in Photoshop. Uh, if you go to the help option, uh, you there are hands-on tutorials built right into the software. Uh, you can even search things like, for example, uh, quick select, uh, quick select. And not only will it tell you where to find the tool, but it will give you links to watching those kinds of tutorials. Uh, if you kind of go to the home window here, there are quick hands-on tutorials, what are called quick actions, and frankly, like, these are pretty vague. I don't even really know what enhance image means, um, because I think in much more specific ways. But hey, you, if you're learning Photoshop for the first time, that may be a great tutorial to just sort of check out. Now, there's also... Uh, a really great resource built into the Adobe Creative Cloud website. Uh, go to Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, click on the little stack grid in the corner, go to more, we're going to go all the way to the Photoshop page. And since you are sort of a member of this community in a way, you bought yourself a membership, uh, go, to, uh, go to Photoshop here, click learn more, and, uh, and I want you to see... Uh, sort of what you have access to. Check this out, Photoshop Courses. This stuff is all built into the Adobe Creative Cloud website. How to do stop motion animation, how to combine images, how to make cut collage. There's a lot packed in here, and they're very short, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Now, of course, I'm going to have a lot of those tutorials available for you, too, through my YouTube channel, uh, but a lot of it is here. Speaking of YouTube, or for that matter, speaking of just like the web, 
And the web is, you know, not some abstracted idea. It's just a bunch of people connecting through these things. If you just punch in how do I make a quick selection, uh, because there are so many users of Photoshop out there. I mean, just take a look at the top hits. You're like, just so many options. Photoshop Essentials, Excerpt Photography, Help X Adobe. I mean, take your pick, right? There's a ton of help out there. Uh, there should be no point this semester where you're really kind of stuck sitting on your hands wishing that you knew what you were doing uh, because there's so much to do. Um, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this tutorial just by saying... Um, Get into Photoshop and I want you to um, sort of uh, do some basic kind of image corrections in Camera Raw. We can talk exposure, contrast, things like that. And so for our first two assignments, I'm not going to have very strict editing um, guidelines. We're going to learn some more specific stuff. Um, but when you get into Photoshop for the first time, I want your edits to be pretty specific to the images you have. And then as we develop our skills, uh, we'll get um, a more kind of robust vocabulary of editing. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you in the studio.